These are spending vanity and pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified. Knowing not it was for me, he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so of liberty at Calvary. By God's words at last my sin I learn. Then I tremble at the law. I spurn till my guilty soul in glory turn to Calvary. Oh, the love. That drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. was free, but and there was multiplied to me, there my burden so of liberty at Calvary. Now I've given to Jesus everything, now I gladly own him as my king, now my Shit, so can only sing of Calvary. Mercy, there was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. There, my burden so found liberty at Calvary. was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burden for a liberty at Calvary, mercy there was great and grace was free at Thank you guys for coming to worship with us today. We gather to celebrate this day, the greatest day in history, Resurrection Sunday, the day that light came into this dark world. The light was called our beautiful Savior, Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, Jesus Messiah, the Lord of all. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross, love so amazing. Love so amazing, 
Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from hell. Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body for bread, His blood for wine, broken and poured out all for love. The whole earth trembled and the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Name above all names. Blessed Redeemer. For sinners, the ransom from heaven, oh Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, all our hope is in you, all our hope. Glory to you, God, the light of the world, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. Sinners, the ransom from heaven, oh Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Messiah, Lord of the Savior, I fell fire from above, I've been down to the river, I ain't the same, a body girl is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday is gone. All my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. I'm no stranger to the prison. 
I would shackles and chains. I've been freed and forgiven, and I'm not going back. I'll never be the same. Come on and sing now. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday is gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. Oh, I've been washed by the blood. Well, there's a kind of thing that just breaks you down. Brings you down to your knees. God, I've been broken more than a time or two. Yes, I have. But he picked me up and showed me what it means to be free. And now I see all my hope is in Jesus. I thank God my yesterday is gone. All my sins are forgiven. Being washed by the blood. Come on, sing now. Oh, now hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. And all my sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord. Being washed by the blood. Oh, I've been washed by the blood. Amen. Because you know the truth is without Jesus there's no hope for you and me because we can't be good enough, we can't even be bad enough because it's not about us. It's about what Jesus did by giving us mercy and grace on that cross. It's the story of that Jesus Messiah, the Savior of the world. He took on all our sin and gave us a reason to believe. And that belief and trust in what he did for us, if you accept it, and you latch on to it, it's going to change your life forever. Because when he died, it looked like the end, but it wasn't the end, it was the beginning. I was taking a trip on a plane the other day Just wishing that I could get out When the man next to me saw the book in my hand And he asked me what it was about I settled back in my seat A bestseller I said A history and mystery in one Then I opened up the book and began to read The Matthew, Mark, Luke and John he was born of a virgin one holy night in the little town of Bethlehem. Angels gathered round him underneath the stars singing praises to the great I am. He walked on the water, healed the lame, made the blind to see again. And for the first time here on earth, we learned that God can be a friend. And though he never ever did a single thing wrong, the angry crowd chose him. Then he walked down the road and died on the cross, and that was the end of the beginning. The 
Well, that's not a new book, that's the Bible, he said, and I've heard it all before. I tried religion, it's shame and guilt, and I don't need it anymore. It's superstition, made of tears, just to help the weak to survive. I said, I'll read it again, but listen closely, this is gonna change your life. He was born of a virgin one lonely night in the little town of Bethlehem. Angels gathered round him underneath the stars singing praises to the great I am. He walked on the water, healed the lame, made the blind to see again. And for the first time here on earth, we learned that God can be a friend. And though he never ever did a single thing wrong, the angry crowd chose him. Then he walked on the road and died on the cross, and that was the end of the beginning. The end of the beginning, he said with a smile, what more could there be? He's dead. You said they hung him, put nails in his hands, and a crown of thorns on his head. I said I'll read it again, but this time there's more, and I believe that this is true. His death wasn't the end, but the beginning of life that's completed in you. He did all this for you. He was born of a virgin one holy night in the little town of Bethlehem. Angels singing, praises to the great I am. He walked on the water, healed the lame, and made the blind to see. And for the first time here on earth, we learned that God could be a friend. And though we never ever did a single thing wrong, He was the one the crowd chose. Then He walked, and He died. But three days later, three days later, So, Father, we thank you this morning, and thank you is just not enough to express our gratitude for something that you did for us that was so great, for sending Jesus to die so that we might live. And I pray, Father, that you touch the lives of those here today that need hope. Thank you for being here with us and alive in us, for you are that hope, our living hope. And we are so grateful. We love you, Lord. And we worship you today. And thank you for loving us that much. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain 
I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. From through the darkness, your loving kindness towards you the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What part could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Set me free, hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence, the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Then came the morning that sealed the promise your very body began to breathe out of the silence. The rolling lion, the of the grave, has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the Would you bow with me? 
as we go before our Lord again. Oh, Father, what an incredible, incredible day this is. For, Father, we come to celebrate. But, God, we don't celebrate as spectators. We celebrate as those who literally participate with you in the death, burial, and resurrection. Oh, Father. We don't want to be entertained. We want to see your spirit move. Something that is beyond man's ability. We want to see you manifest yourself in ways that are unquestionably you. So Holy Spirit continue to move. Father, I pray this in the name and the power and the majesty of our risen Christ Jesus. Amen. I'd like to direct your attention again to John's Gospel. John chapter 12. As I was reading, preparing for this, this really wasn't what I had in mind. But this just jumped out at me and the Holy Spirit was waving his arms and going, hey, right here, right here. That verse in 23 really captured my attention and my imagination. Jesus said the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now, we think of this as something that is absolutely incredible, absolutely unexplainable. But it was a process. This this glorification was a process. And this principle that is through it is true throughout God's word is the idea that there is a going down before there is a lifting up. There is a descent before there is ascent. It is true with Christ. It has been true throughout history, and the same is true with you and I. As we think about what all Christ went through the Passion Week, he came into Jerusalem riding on the colt of a donkey. The the people were just ecstatic. They picked up palm leaves. They had followed him out from Bethany. They had come out from Jerusalem. And they were, were just waving these palm leaves. They were shouting. They were singing, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But the Passion Week did not keep that same tempo. Throughout it, Jesus was finding all of the the fraud within the religion. We see him finally going to the garden, the garden of Gethsemane. He is so intense. He knows what's coming. He is so, so into it, sweat drops of blood. And then his disciples, his friends, his followers, his students, the ones that he counts on, can't even stay awake. We go through the arrest. We go through the trials. We go through all that he endured being beaten and spit upon the thorn, the crown of thorns pushed down into his brow. He, the, the guards making him carry that cross through the via, up the Via Della Rosa. But guess what? That was just the preparation. That, that, that was, was not the bottom. He was, was, this was just getting ready for what was about to happen. You know, we have come up with this idea that, well, if you're a Christian, everything's going to be great. Just accept Jesus, kick back, don't worry. Folks, I'm here to tell you, it ain't so. It ain't so. We want it. We desire it to be easy. We desire, we want it to feel good. We look at somebody who's on top of the world, everything's going right, we think, and we say, boy, God is blessing them. We look at somebody that's down on his luck, that's having a hard time. We look at a family that's that's fighting cancer. We look at a family who's had bad accident. We say, man, where is God? Folks, God is just as much with the ones who are struggling, if not more so, than the ones who have seemingly got it all. 
God is with them. We, we want it to feel good. It doesn't feel good. We want it to always be about me. But if we're honest, it should always be about Jesus being glorified. He said, He will. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I want you to understand a life of faith, this journey that we walk, it's a hard journey. It's a hard journey. But my testimony is it's worth it. It's worth it. The ups, the downs, it is all worth it. When we see Christ finally laid upon that cross that he's carried up, he is nailed to that cross. He is lifted up. Now, we have the idea of this picture of him being way, way up high. He really wasn't. His feet were between 18 to 24 inches off the ground. God did that so that we could hear what Jesus said on the cross. We heard it very plainly. You talk about a descent down. The seven things that he said. He started out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Who was he talking about? Was he talking about the soldiers that had nailed him on that cross? Probably so. Are they talk, was he talking about the soldiers that had whipped him? Probably so. Was he talking about Judas who betrayed him? Probably so. Was he talking about the eleven disciples who were nowhere to be found? Probably so. Was he talking about me? Probably so. Second thing that Jesus said upon the cross, Truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Well, he's got, he wasn't crucified alone. There was a thief on his right and a thief on his left. One of the thieves, the thieves is just mean and ugly and, and, and badgering him. Well, if you're the Son of God, command it. Get down from here. The other one is saying, oh, wait, 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 wait. He said, you and I, we deserve this. We did wrong. We got caught. We're, we're getting the punishment we deserve. But this man, Jesus, he's innocent. And he looks at Jesus. And, and there is this element of faith. Because above him, Jesus, King of the Jews. And he looks at him and he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And this is to which Jesus replies, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. He is still offering that salvation. The third thing that he says is, woman, this is your son. He's talking to Mary, his mother. And there is a disciple there. His name is John, the beloved disciple. And, and he, he is making provision. But then he reinforces it to John and he says, this is your mother. He's going to make sure she's taken care of. And then it gets really steep in that descent down. Darkness has engulfed the world for three hours. And he cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I want you to, to, to get this picture from eternity up to this point. The Father and the Son had never had separation. From this point, the Father and the Son had never had anything but perfect fellowship. And now, Jesus is bearing. He became sin who knew no sin. That sin was mine. That sin was mine. And because He became sin, God turned His back upon the Son. He said, I thirst. 
Why was he thirsty? Why was he thirsty from the garden through the the, the night, through the mock trials and the, the 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 beatings and the carrying the cross and hanging there for six hours? He is bleeding. He says, "I thirst." And one of the soldiers puts a sponge on the end of a limb and raises it up to him. But here. I want you to catch this. It wasn't just any limb. It wasn't a mesquite limb. It wasn't an oak limb. Hyssop. Hyssop. Why is that significant? When the, the, the Hebrews were in Egypt and God was enacting the plagues and the last plague was the death angel and they had to take and put blood on the doorpost. What did they use to do that? The hyssop. Realm. The Passover. Here is the Passover lamb hanging on the cross. And then he said, It is finished. His trouble? No. The end of his pain? No. My salvation. Your salvation. It's finished. He, it was all done by Jesus. You see, I cannot add anything to salvation. I can't be good enough. I can't go to church enough. I can't read my Bible enough. I can't give up enough money. I can't do anything more than what Jesus did upon the cross. He was the perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God that took away my sins. It is finished. And then he ended it with, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. You realize it then basically nine hours. This wasn't the norm. Men lasted longer than that. No man took his life. See, there wasn't a single Roman soldier that took the life of Jesus. He freely gave it. He gave it for you and I. It is finished into your hands. I commend my spirit. The descent, the descent all the way down to the bottom and the grave. They took his lifeless body off of the cross, wrapped it and put it in a borrowed grave. And there he lay. That is the bottom of the bottom, the deepest low. But it's at that point that God works. It's at that point when we are at the bottom that God intervenes for us. I want to share with you very quickly a story about a young man named David. David was kind of the all-American boy. You know, he was good looking. He did good in school. He was a great athlete. But this was in the late 60s. Remember what was going on in the late 60s? Vietnam. So he got out of school and into the Navy he went. Well, because he was a good athlete, because he was smart, they, they he was assigned into this elite group that was kind of a search and rescue, search and destroy special forces. And David was, was leading his unit. And one evening, one evening, outside of Saigon, his unit gets pinned down by machine gun fire. All they can do is lay on their bellies, face to the ground, and try to wait for a time when it stops. They can't move. But David, he'd gone as far as he could. He stood up, he reached and got a phosphorus grenade off of his belt, pulled the pin, and just as he pulled it back, the bullet hit him in the arm. The grenade explodes next to his ear. He's knocked to the ground. When he regains consciousness, right there in the river where he is laying partially, submerged, he sees part of his face. He knows that his arm, he can't move it 
his body. He can't move. He feels the burning of that phosphorus grenade. Miraculously, his unit drags him out of the river. They get a chopper and get him into Saigon. They look at him, and they know he's probably not going to make it. Most of his face is gone. His arm is gone. His body, he's got that, that phosphorus deep, deep inside. They put him on a plane and get him to Hawaii. The, the, the surgery was horrible as they would open him up and that phosphorus that was embedded in his body would receive that fresh air. Boom! Fire. They make it through the surgery. Again, miraculously. And he's in a room to recover, but he's not alone. There's another man that had just been body mutilated from war. And he he can tell that the man is in pain like he is. He can tell that the man is desperate like he is. He can tell that the man is at the bottom like he is. The man's wife comes to visit him. She takes one look at her husband and she literally vomits. He is that disfigured. He is that grotesque to look at. He looks up at his wife with hungry eyes wanting her affection and she takes her wedding ring off, lays it on the bedside table and said, I can't do it. I cannot be married to a man that I can't even look at. She turns around and leaves. Two days later, sobbing most of the time, he passes. David's wife is coming in a couple of days and all he can think of is What's she going to think? What's she going to do? Is she going to put her wedding ring on my table too? She walks in. And she stops. And she doesn't say a word. And he's thinking, oh, this is it. He turns his head where he does not, she doesn't look straight at him. And she walks over. And there's just a very small sliver of skin that is not bandaged. She reaches down and she kisses that little piece of skin that's not bandaged. She said, I love you. It doesn't matter what has been done to you. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. I love you. David went through Multiple, multiple surgeons trying to repair and put back and give him some semblance of a, of a face. And he realized, he realized that at the very bottom of his existence, there was God. And God was putting him back together. And he told God, I have experienced the unconditional love of my wife. I have experienced the unconditional love of my Jesus. I will tell everybody I meet about you. This is a true story. He has spent basically the rest of his life traveling the world, telling people of his experience, and telling them at the very bottom of the descent is an awesome God who loves This morning, this morning, where are you at? I know everybody in here is not on top of the mountain. I know there's some of you that are kind of at the bottom. I know there's some of you that you've descended. But I want you to know that there is a hand reaching down. And that hand, unlike mine, has a big nail scar in it. And that nail-scarred hand is there 
because he loves you. That nail scar hand is there because there is nothing that you have done that he can't forgive. There is nothing that has happened to you that he can't repair. There is nothing. He doesn't care about the circumstances. Jesus wants you. This morning, in just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. This morning, we're going to give each one of you who's down at the bottom that opportunity to grab hold of that nail-scarred hand. Let me tell you, when God did it, He did it right. Jesus at the bottom, wrapped in linen, laid in a borrowed tomb. And what did God do? He reached down. And that Jesus, He overcame death. He rose again and is alive today, able to offer you the same thing. As we stand and sing together, will you reach up? Will you take that hand? Step out. Come down. Let me help you. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb, O God, I come, I come, just as I am, and waiting not to read my soul. A wandered blood to me, whose blood can cleanse each spot. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Continue on one more song, one more stanza. This is for you. This is your time. Where are you? Jesus is reaching out. Will you come? I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I welcome with open arms. Praise God, just as I am. Just as I am, I would be lost. But mercy and grace, my freedom bought. And now to glory in the cross, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. 
I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I welcome with open arms. Praise God. Just as I am. As I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O oh, Lamb. Oh God, I come, I come. I come broken to be mended, I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued, I come empty to be filled. I am guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb, and I'm welcome with open arms. Praise God, just as I am, just as I am. I would be lost, but mercy and grace, my freedom bought, and now to glory in the cross, O oh Lamb, O oh God, I come. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O oh, Lamb. Oh God, I come, I come. All I can say is thank you, God. Yeah. We serve an awesome, risen Savior. His Spirit moved among us today 
in a great and mighty fashion. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for each one that is here. Father, the faces, the hurts, the struggles, you can lift us up because you have risen. God bless each one. In Jesus' name, amen. Cowboy Church family, happy Easter.